So Resolve 17 has finally arrived. My name is Darren Mostyn and I've been using this software since version 7. So I've seen quite a few updates but this is by far the biggest update I've ever seen. The new tools in here are amazing. The Blackmagic software development team have really listened to what people want. So in this episode I want to show you some of the new things that are in the cut page and the edit page. So let's go and take a look. So here we are with our first look at the editing section. So I'm talking about the cut page and the edit page here. And both of them have got a ton of new features. The software developers really haven't held back here. So let's get straight in and start with the cut page. I'm going to give you my 10 highlights for the cut page and the edit page here. So firstly, they've introduced a new inspector. So up here, if I click Inspector, we've got a redefined Inspector. It's much neater now, and it's tabbed, so you've got all these different sections. So on the video side, we've got the same sort of tools, but we've now got stabilization in the cut page, which is fantastic. Here I can do my regular sort of uh, resizing and all that sort of stuff. And then you've got an audio section here. So we've got all our audio tools that we had before. And we've now got an effects tab here. So we click on here. And I've added noise reduction to this clip. So another new feature is you can actually apply noise reduction from within the edit page and the cut page. So if I just go to the effects here, and you can see that there. So there's a ton of new effects in here that we can apply directly. So that's really great. Then over to here, we've got the transitions. So here's a transition, which is a dissolve. So we can make any changes we want to that. And there's also an audio fade in here. So again, really cool, handy tools that are just really easy to access. Uh, image I'm going to come to in a moment, but there's this one here called file. And what this does is allow us to add um, editable metadata. So we can actually put in here metadata and that is now applied to the clip. Now, what's useful here is that all of these tools here can be applied at source level. So at the minute, we're applying them to a timeline clip, but if I highlight a source file and make some changes in here, these are applied at source level. So every time I use this clip to edit in, these parameters will apply. So for example, let's say we wanna move this uh, drinks out of the shot. So I'm just gonna move that over like that. And that way, that is now applied at source level. So every time it's edited in, we don't see this part of the image here. And another great feature inside the inspector is because this is a raw file, if I click on image, I've actually got access to the raw data. So I can actually play with the raw settings inside the cut page. So let's have a look. At the minute, it's defaulting to project. Let's put it down to clip. These now become active and I can change whatever I need to change here. So let's just have a look at the exposure and let's give it a bit of saturation. Uh, a little bit more contrast maybe. And that is now set at source level. So again, anytime I edit it in, these raw settings will apply. So that's really cool. So the next new feature I want to show you is up at the top here, there is a safe area. So it's split into three areas. You've got social media settings, you've got broadcast, regular broadcast and film settings, and you can choose what you want in your safe area to be included, if you want a title safe or action safe. This one here is quite useful. We do quite a lot of reformatting now for social media and Instagram, and we have to provide square formatting. So this is a really useful guideline for that. Which brings us really nicely onto the next feature that I want to show you. So if I click up here, we can change the format. This has been in since version 16. So if I want to do the square formatting, I can click on here and it changes the project settings to be 1080 by 1080. So what I need to do now is use the transform tools to fill that image. And then typically what I would do is use X and Y positioning to reframe as best suits. However, if I just reset that, there is a new feature in here called Smart Reframe. And what I can do is literally put it onto automatic, or you can choose a reference point, but I'm gonna leave it onto automatic. And I'm gonna say reframe, and it's gonna automatically analyze this clip and reframe for me. So watch this, I'm gonna play this back from the beginning. So make sure you step back when you do that one. Eyebrows okay? Yes. So what it's doing is it's focusing on who's talking. So this is really smart stuff. So it's focusing on the girl on the right to start with. As soon as she starts speaking, it moves over to the left. Eyebrows okay? Yes. And then reframes back again. That is a fantastic feature. So that's the smart reframe tool. And that's available in the edit page as well. Let's just put this back to our regular HD mode. To reset those parameters, I just click up here and say remove and reset all or just the video effects. So let's just reset the video and that's back to how it was. Let's just take off the title safe and we're done. So the next new feature will help us with audio trimming. So over here, there's a new icon and I'm gonna click that, it says audio trim. And if I go to this shot here and just play, 
Okay, so I've got two here. Um, so we're gonna get rid of and two here and. So I'm literally gonna grab the front of the clip here. And as I start moving, because I'm in audio trim mode, we get an enlarged waveform. Okay, so I've got two here. Um, Let's play that back. I'm gonna, I'm gonna butterfly one. So that's another useful audio trimming tool in the cut page. So let's look at one last thing before we go to the edit page, and that is up here. So if we go to the transitions, you've got new icons for all the transitions, so they look really smart, and the effects. Everything has got a little icon on it, so you can see really quickly what everything is. And also on the transitions, what happens is when you hover over them and move from left to right, you get a live preview of the transition. So that's really cool. So if you want to apply one, I'm going to apply this, uh, this one push, just double click and that's applied down here. So that's a really quick way of working with those transitions. Okay, let's take a look at the edit page. And you'll be pleased to know there's some really great features in here as well. So firstly, I've got a clip here in the source viewer and I'm just going to take the audio off for a moment. And if I play that through, you'll see that it's actually a series of edits baked together in one clip. So this is one flattened ProRes file. And what I want to do is insert that into the program, but I want the individual edits coming in as well. Now, traditionally, I would take that to the scene cut detector, and that would mean going back to the media page and right-clicking and saying scene cut detect. But I don't want to do that. I want to stay in the edit page. So with version 17, I can do that now. So let's insert this at the beginning over here. I'm just going to literally insert edit that in. So there's my shot with all the edits baked in. But what I want to do now is if I go to my timeline up here, I can say detect scene cuts. And just before I do that, I'm going to just use my X key to mark in and out. Otherwise, it scene cut detects the whole timeline. So if we just go on here, detect scene cuts. And this is using the DaVinci Neural Engine. So you need the studio version of Resolve to run that. Uh, but this is really where DaVinci is getting really intelligent. Okay, and there we go, and that's all chopped up for me. So just to show you, if I go back one edit, that's bang on, go to the next edit, move back one. So if someone sends you a flattened file as a promo that might need grading or need some extra editing, you can just throw it on the timeline, hit the scene cut detect, and you're good to go. So the next feature I want to show you is the auto align. So this is a really great way of syncing up time code. So down here, we've got this shot of uh, cooking some prawns. And I've got two other camera angles which have matching time codes. So if I go into here and go to my side view, so there's our side camera. So what I'm going to do is just literally randomly throw that down so it's obviously out of alignment. And the same, I've got a top view here. I'm going to do exactly the same. So I'm just going to throw it down. And all I've got to do to line these up is highlight all three of them. I'm going to right hand click and say auto align. And I can use waveform or time code and then that puts them into the right place. So what we can do now is play with these as edits to give us our cutaways. So let's go side view just up to that point. And then just when she actually cuts the prawn in half, we'll go to the top view. And then we'll cut back here to the main wide. So let's just play that back. In half, from, t uh, from head to tail. Just like that. Crunch down all the way through. <laughs> A little oh, bit lovely. of muscle, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and into the pan. So that's a great way of syncing up your clips really quickly. Just throw them on the timeline and let Resolve do the work for you. So the effects have been updated as well in version 17. So let's have a look at the effects library in here. And as you sit on top of any of these filters, you get a real life preview of what's going on in your viewer. So if I go to the box blur, directional blur. So that's a really cool feature. And obviously you've got these nice new soft icons to, uh, to guide you. And if I have a look at the effects in here, go to the open effects and the filters. And if we scroll down from here, we'll see that we've got keying tools now. So you can actually key directly on the timeline without having to go into the color page or the fusion page. And what I wanna do is scroll down here and have a look at this noise reduction. So you can now use noise reduction directly on your clips. So let's take a shot. Let's do this one here, for example. I'm just gonna literally drag and drop that down onto here. Open up my inspector go to the effects tab, and there you see all the tools that you need for the noise reduction. Okay, so I'm just gonna add a tiny little bit in there. I'm just putting in an arbitrary amount in there. That's really great. You can literally use a lot of the tools that you would have had to go to the color page for in the past. You can now use them directly in the edit page. So if you're not a colorist, this is really gonna help you.
So if you're enjoying this content so far, hit the subscription button and drop me a comment and uh, have a look at my other episodes. Even though they're version 16, there's some very relevant information in there. And uh, let's get on with the rest of this episode. So the next thing I want to show you is that I can actually bake that into this shot. So we've just added noise reduction. I'm just going to zoom in to my timeline a little bit. And let's say we want to render that out and replace it as a new clip. Well, what you can do now is right hand click on here and you can say render in place. And when I click this, I get a choice of codecs. So we can make that, let's make that 42HQ and I don't want any handles on it and we're going to render it. So when I press render, it'll ask me where I want it to go. I'm going to put it in there and off it goes. So now I've got a new shot with a new name and that has literally replaced my other shot. So I could actually export all this out now using that shot or if I want to go back to my original master, I can right hand click on here and say decompose to original. So I hope you enjoyed looking at my highlights of the cut page and the edit page. Enjoy Resolve 17 and I'll see you in the next episode.